Hey guys, how's it going? It's Luke Truman here today and what I want to do today is quickly go through a half year update. Back in January, December time I did a video which was basically what my goals were for 2021 and now it's seeing as it's about halfway through the year. I think it would be a good time to review and look back and see uh, what some changes I've made because I have made quite a few changes to uh, what I said I was going to do at the time. So I guess one of the first things that I said I was going to do is that I was going to have the time before I went to bed as podcast time. So, you know, before I go to bed, instead of switching on any of the screens, instead of doing any of that, I was just going to listen to podcasts and have that as some dedicated listening practice. What changed since then, actually, is I have started using these headphones, which are just some uh, noise cancelling headphones by Sony. And basically it allows me whenever I'm walking around the house, doing chores, whenever I'm walking somewhere, or even now I've started driving to work instead of getting the train and cycling, I've got my commute time again, I can put stuff on the stereo and listen to that in the car, then all that time I'm already started like listening to podcasts naturally, so I found because I'm getting a lot more exposure to that naturally, then I don't need to create time for it before bed. Um, at the moment, when I go before bed, I typically watch a few YouTube videos, or maybe like a few episodes of One Piece or something like that, um, maybe in future years, probably not right now, um, but maybe in the future I might experiment trying to do some short meditation during that time, but as for the moment, I'm not going to try and do that. So that's something I've changed. Um, I'm, I've ended up listening to a lot of podcasts naturally anyway. If you've seen some of my videos on the 40-hour, 7-day week language challenge, some days I was listening to one and a half hours, two hours, two and a half hours podcast without even really trying to. So for me, it doesn't make sense to create a dedicated spot for that if I'm already getting a lot of exposure to it anyway, just from going about my day. And it seems like it's a lot better use of time to make use of time driving or, or walking about or doing chores around the house if I can just listen while I do that. And that, you know, sometimes it's not always podcast, sometimes it's audio books as well. The, the second thing that I said I was going to do is that I was going to try and aim to get my total books read in Chinese up to 40 books by the end of the year, which would involve 20-ish books this year. And, you know, I was on track for a little bit, but then one thing that I realised is um, there's a lot of books that I wanted to read quite badly, but then they were so long, you know, um, things that come to mind. There's the Santi trilogy, the last book, and that's like 600 pages. There's things like Shongdi, that's again, I think like 500, 600 pages. There's some of these uh, Wuxia books by like Gulong, some of them are maybe like a thousand pages and that's the PDF. And I found myself trying to select the books that I wanted to read, not only based on if it's at my level and if it's interesting, but also how long is the book. Really, I don't want to be doing that. So I'm deciding to get rid of that target. I've read 30 books now. So if I was to keep on going at this pace, I'd probably end up with maybe 35, 36 by the end of the year, so I would be short of that goal, but I don't want to feel pressured into trying to select short, shorter books just to inflate some stat that probably doesn't actually matter that much, when in reality what I could be doing is just, you know, focusing and reading what books I actually do like, and the way I'm structuring it now, so there is going to be some change from before, in the morning, every day before work, I'm still going to be doing the bulk of my extensive reading before then. But what I'm trying to set up now, and this was something that I've started uh, this week, is I'm trying to set up a half an hour slot after work, when I get back from work every day, to do some sort of more intensive activity. Sometimes it's intensive reading, and for me it's going to be things that would require that wouldn't be suitable to extensive. So, you know, if you're reading a story, to me, you can just sit there and read it. But if I'm going to read something like this, which is a textbook for physics and chemistry for middle school students in Taiwan or if I'm going to be reading something like this which is a history book again with short chapters I'm going to be needing to look up quite a lot of words I'm going to be making sure I want to go through slowly and absorb the information I'm going to want to look up the character names so I think going through that sort of context is going to make more sense for me to do it not on an extensive way and really just take my time go through it a bit more slowly and I'm going to be doing that sort of stuff after work so as well as reading through intensive reading and the first one that I'm choosing to go through is this science book here and I've gone through about 30 pages of that and I think it's about 150 pages total. Um, if I do that twice a week after work then you know I'll probably finish it in maybe a few months um, which is fine because it's kind of like a secondary task at the moment. So other things that I'm going in that little slot after work, some days I'm going to be starting to shadow and also, apart from that, I'm also going to be going through some courses on Coursera. So one of the other things that I said I was going to do was I wanted to experiment a lot more with writing this year. And this is still something that I'm very much interested in. I did write um, two chapters to 
a book, a novel that I was starting to write, and they were about five pages of A4 each with a single line spacing. And it was fun. I mean, I got, I think I got a bit out of it. It got corrected by my teacher, noticed that there was quite a few reoccurring grammar mistakes that I then tried to kind of hone in when I was writing the second chapter because I got it corrected one at a time. Um, thinking about how I'm going to word things, there's lots of things I can do. Maybe if I've got a certain idea I want to express, when I'm reading, t pay attention and try to look out for a phrase, phrasing that I can use. If there's, say, I want to look at someone's expression, like Biao Qing, and I'm trying to think how do I express that, maybe I go into another novel by another author and controlled F and can see all the different ways that someone expresses that. Maybe from talking about a bloody scene I I control F share and then see how they express that, you know. Or I ask my friends, um, hey can you describe this picture for me and see what they come back with. There's lots of things that I can do and that I was finding quite helpful. But I think in terms of the level I'm at at the moment, writing is something that I do want to get at in the future, but it's probably not that applicable to focus on so much at the moment when really the main thing that held me back which I think I said in my my video back in December is that it's just vocabulary so I'm still going to be doing some writing um, but it's probably going to be shorter and it's not going to be going on such a big project like I mentioned in the start so I did go through two chapters of that um, if anyone's interested maybe I can send you the chapter one it was kind of like a fantasy wusha sort of setting probably more of a European style fantasy than than uh, Chinese but um so what I'm going to do instead is I've found out there's a really great resource called Coursera, which basically if you look online, so if you go on the website Coursera and you actually search at the top here, National Taiwan University, there's a bunch here of free courses on different topics. You can filter by level and that's not obviously Chinese level, it's level of your expertise in a certain subject. Um, you can filter by area, so you know if you want to do something related to computer science, physical science and engineering, arts and humanities and you can tend to just filter through to what you want and look that way. And all of these videos, it's basically there's a series of lectures and there's also going to be homework and maybe short written assignments assigned throughout and there's going to be a set of, you know, the video series, the lectures also all have complete transcripts that you can use to look up any words in there. So it's going to be quite useful and that's something that I want to experiment with at the moment. So the one that I'm going through at the moment, Shen Dai Wen Shui, which is kind of modern literature and it's, you know, it's about poems, modern novels, that sort of thing. And the reason I picked it is actually because the, the amount of uh, time investment for this one, I think it was only about an hour a week. So it's quite easy to kind of do as like a first experiment. And then if that goes successfully, I'm going to probably go into some other ones as well. There was one to do with an introduction to physics, which I did about a week of lectures for, but then quickly started falling behind because I think it required about four to five hours, which at the time I wasn't ready to invest. So in terms of the half an hour slot after work, then how I'm going to break it up is I've kind of did a rough plan. So I've said shadowing, I want to try twice a week. And um, I'm going to talk a bit about that at the end of the video. For the Coursera, I'm going to again be trying to do that twice a week, which is why I don't think it's particularly suitable for me to be doing something that requires a lot of time, let's say the physics course, just because it's going to get in the way of other stuff. On Wednesday, I was going to be doing classical Chinese because I'm still continuing my lessons with my tutor once every two weeks, roughly. And then Friday and Sunday, I'm going to be going over a book with a bit more intensive reading style and like I said the one that I'm going through at the moment is this textbook for physics and chemistry uh, for middle school students in Taiwan and the reason I'm going through that now I mean one of the big pushes that I'm trying to do is really to try and incorporate some more I guess professional create more science related vocabulary into what I can talk about because one thing that I was frustrated that I couldn't speak about with many of my friends when I was over there was science um, if I ever want to be able to use it in any sort of professional environment and at the moment I, I'm not sure if I will it's kind of just a hobby at the moment but I, I definitely need to learn these sorts of things and at least for me it's something I enjoy talking about it's something I be, want to be able to express myself on so I'm trying to you know learn a lot more science related stuff um, I guess three things that I'm doing for that at the moment one would be the textbook there the other thing would be I've downloaded some of the company standards off our internal website of how various equipment work like for example the air separation unit how compressors work stuff like that and i've downloaded it there's bilingual versions in simplified chinese and english um that i've been working my way towards a little bit with some of my teachers and also i found on italki you can actually silk foot search by keywords so if you just simply go to the page where you're looking for a teacher you first select the language that you want to learn so for me that was chinese and then what you can do is you can simply go into the box here and type in any say keywords that you want to look for so for me i searched 
engineering and then I went through and watched some of the videos relating to that and then what, what this means is the people coming up have engineer in their bio. So for example this was one of the teachers that I took a few lessons with Carl, I've got a lesson with him tomorrow again to talk about more stuff and you might recognize him from my two year update video where I talked a little bit about some concepts related to my work or physics just at a kind of high level. And one of the other things that I'm doing as well to kind of get a bit more towards that science goal I guess is I, one of the novels that I'm reading or I've just finished the first one in the trilogy is The Three Body Problem and again that is a hard science fiction a trilogy it is really good the first one out of the trilogy i've finished was just my 30th book so it's quite a decent milestone i guess i will be creating a video about the last 10 books that i read like i do every every time i get to a multiple of 10 and that's hard science fiction there's lots of very scientific words in there there's lots of things related to particle physics to nanotechnology to space to travel to aliens and yeah it's full of all sorts of technical vocab but the story is really really good i think that's something that i was thinking about at the moment one thing is that i know probably in terms of bang for my buck one thing that i could be doing to try and improve the most at the moment i think is probably shadowing and working on pronunciation and porosity but i still think there still is a lot of a way to improve in terms of vocabulary for me at the moment and that and because I'm enjoying going through content so much at the moment is one of the things that I want to be able to do is just go and, you know, go through these books that I want, wanted to read for so long, like Sandy, like Huang Jin Shi Dai, like Bai Lu Yuan, like that sort of thing. And there's so, so many things that I want to watch that I want to do that I want to read that if I can do that and focus on improving my vocabulary at the same time while enjoying this content, then my reading and listening is going to get better. And then when I do come to focus more on shadowing later down the line, I think it will probably be easier because my listening will be better. Now, having said that, I am still doing it. I'm going to be doing it for twice a week at the moment. <laughs> I'm going to be going uh, to try and do shadowing twice a week at the moment for, say, half an hour. I'm going to be starting off with chorusing. And then further down the line, maybe when I've finished some of the books that I'm doing intensive reading with, so it'll probably be these two, one for history and one for science. Maybe when I've also, maybe when I've also finished the Coursera, course that i'm on then that's going to free up more days that i can do after work to try and start shadowing more then so at the moment i'm only just kind of dabbling into it but i'm still got this video as kind of a starting point for my level and on a quick note there is not just fiction there's also a lot of uh non-fiction i'm very excited to read for example this one which was a book by a taiwanese author that seemed to be mentioned in just about every single podcast that i'm listening to it seemed to be really popular in taiwan at the moment i'm still working my way through classical Chinese, which I'm finding is significantly helping my knowledge of comprehension of historical dramas, because if you watch any of them, like I'm watching uh, Sangwa at the moment, which is the Three Kingdoms, and they have referenced lots of classical Chinese in that. Uh 我希望我的那个全部的发音声调什么的节奏都会进步因为这个肯定是我一个一个弱点我拍完这个影片以后呢我也会可能拍很多跟下段文跟根据说相关的影片是因为那个是一个我感兴趣的话题而且我知道很多
跟发音有关的课程，你可以注册。那 coursing 跟 shadowing 在哪里不一样呢？不一样的地方就是 coursing 你会找到几个代表的柱子，可能十个到二十个柱子。然后你会听好几遍，好几遍，会模仿一样的柱子好几遍，所以那个对你的那个肌肉的肌肉记忆会有比较大的影响，因为你在说一样的柱子好几遍，才会有那个肌肉记忆。那个逻辑就是说，你说了几百遍以后呢，你说那么多次，你的肌肉会习惯说的对。到你无法说错的那个程度。那如果你想改善你的发音，要学这么说，对是第一个部分，但那个还不够，你要练习到无法说错的程度。在我看来呢，我觉得可能两个方法是都有都有很大的帮助。因为 shadowing 是跟着说，你会用比较强一点的内容，可能我觉得就对节奏会。有比较大的帮助吧，就那个 coursing， 因为你可以选择代表的柱子，你可以就专心在你比较在你觉得比较难说的声音，大可能对你的发音会有比较大的帮助。当然，两个方法我都会试试看。我要选择一个在 r e f o l d 的那种，很多人说你要找到一个。好像一个爸爸一样，你要模仿他的声音。你们你们在孩，你是一个孩子的时候，我们都是听我们父母的声音，我们父母说话的风格，对我们说话的那个习惯会有很大的一个影响吧。所以那个逻辑就是说，你要找到你目标语言的爸爸或者妈妈，嗯，可能又跟我一样，差不多一样大。然后我看很多。他的影片，他的内容以后呢，会慢慢的习惯他的说法。然后我如果每一次我要练习说话，我要练习跟着说的时候，我用一样的人物，那那个你会把你的练习的范围放比较小一点，可能你进步的速度会更快。如果你想说你要说话像一个母语者啊，到底那个母语者听起来什么样？因为每一个。每一个人的说话风格是不一样，但是你要说我要说话像那个人，像某一个人，那是容易的多。我选择谁呢？我还那个我还在想呢。我因为我的大部分会说中文的朋友都是来自台湾，所以我肯定是要找到一个跟我差不多一样大的台湾的爸爸了。<笑>呃，我有两个选择，第一个就是阿迪。阿迪，英文的阿迪。那第二个呢，是伯恩，伯恩夜夜秀的那个伯恩。为什么我会选择这两个人呢？就第一个原因，就是因为我希望他们说话的风格。我已经喜欢看他们影片的内容。那如果我喜欢看他的内容，我可以花了比较多的时间看。几个礼拜，我刚开始会比较专心的是 coursing， 可能几个礼拜或者几个月以后。我会开始做 shadowing， 然后看，呃，那那是两个方法的优点跟缺点在哪里？也有大可能，我知道我自己有一些声音是比较难说的，对，比方说那个 u， 在那个 l 的后面的 l， 我、呃、大部分的时候我会会犯那个错，所以我可以找到比较困难的音，就练习这个。这个是我目前的计划。那我希望你，我希望你喜欢看这样子的影片，可以给你带来一些不知道学外语的技巧，或者看我的学中文的过程，会多少会给你一点动力吧。我不知道这你希望看什么内容，你就跟我说说吧。好的，那我们到此为止吧。呃，如果你喜欢这个影片的话，你可以给我按个赞，你可以。开个那个小铃铛，还有订阅我的频道。我们到这里就结束了，我们下次影片见。好 ，peace， 拜拜。